All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have the final match of the round, Robin, and this is just for pride's sake, although it does determine just a little bit about the final best of five, because if Ryan goes 4-0 here, he gets to pick the first map. If he does not and is beaten by Hart, then it's going to be coming down to a coin flip. It's not all that important, but it's a bit of a difference. Yeah, and plus, you know what, Total Biscuit, it means we get to play a lot more StarCraft. There's also a higher chance of uh, me losing my voice, which is always highly entertaining. Whoop, whoop. And, uh, you know, we get, to, we get to make sure we corral all of the viewers together for the super awesome FFA that is going to be taking place after this. Of course, I'm going to be in that FFA, which is always hilarious because anytime I've ever played against a pro, I end up losing within the first two minutes, which is fine because it's for entertainment's sake. So yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's see if Ryong is up to the task. It is TBT, so he's going to do pretty damn well here, I feel. So up to the northwest, we have in the blue trunks, Axiom Ryong. And down the bottom right side, it is indeed going to be Complexity's heart. But if there's anything I've learned about this matchup today, Total Biscuit, it's don't proxy a barracks factory and then a starport. So I doubt we're going to be seeing that. As uh, I feel like that's just a little too much. That's just like lifting off your command center and moving it one hex to the right just because. It's uh, it, it doesn't really help you out in any way. No, no, it certainly does not. And uh, I'm, mm, this, this is a pretty early scout here, actually, for Hart, honestly. I have to wonder if he plans on doing anything a little bit sneaky with that. He may decide to proxy. I mean, he knows this game kind of doesn't matter. He, he is saved from the dishes. So he might decide to do something funky here just to screw with Ryung. And I wouldn't blame him for that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, maybe maybe he just really wants that build we were just talking about to work. So we'll see if he decides to proxy that. Proxy and barracks. of course he does down in the uh, top center-ish area, which I think, I assume that's out of the range of the watchtower. Otherwise, the scouting SMB would just spot that right away. I but, believe it is, uh, yeah, just. Yeah, and he does have the gas going down. I don't know the timing on this, but still, Peroxy Marauders are still really, really good in TBT. And, uh, of course, Reapers are good no matter how you use them. Last time we saw him get a little overzealous with the amount of stuff that uh, he was trying to proxy. So I wonder if he has refined his build, albeit slightly. If he's got any sense, I feel, from this position, he'll go proxy Reaper. Like, that's probably the most effective way of doing damage. His Reaper's going to get there pretty quickly. And unless Ryong builds a Reaper pretty much immediately then he's not going to be able to actually deal with this. So Tech Lab's going to go down. So Tech Lab timing, there it is. So, it, so I, you know, 90% says this is Proxy Reaper and not Proxy Marauder. Yeah, he doesn't have that much gas to uh, back it up with either. So if he was going for a factory, then uh, he would have dropped that before the add-on. So, yep, it is going to be one of the two. The SCV guys scout up here will like what he sees and that there's Marines on the way. There's no Tech Lab just yet, although two Marines is enough to try and buy some time to get the add-on on. Okay. And uh, the SCV gets out of there. But does he decide to do the add-on to follow this up because Marauder on the way? Yeah, it's going to be Proxy Marauder. It may be followed up with a Reaper. We did see two Marauders and a Reaper doing unbelievably well. That was what MMA used actually to kill Hearts. So he may use that or he may just go for straight up Proxy Marauder. Second Marauder coming in. He's, is he going to go for it? No, he's, he's going to hold on. So we'll see if he puts a Reaper on it as well. That would actually give him vision up the ramp, which would make this little push super effective. Yeah, I mean, I think this push is going to be effective either way. I mean, you can see Ryung there taking the risk of not scouting at all. And this is why, I mean, sometimes in DBT you will see this happen, but it's also why these proxy builds are so effective. Whether it's Har the Swarm or whether it's uh, Wings Liberty, doesn't matter. Those two Marines versus two Marauders, that's not going to happen. That's like me versus a football player. That is not going to go anywhere pleasant if you're those two Marines. One Marine right there dying on the ramp. This expansion will most likely just have to be straight up canceled. I don't know how he could actually hold on here. He and uh, does have the two Marines at a time and the reactor is actually done which is going to be nice for him but this is just straight up tough well he's going to try and take down the reactor and he might very well be able to do that scv is being pulled here as well so let's see can ryung actually hold against proxy marauder oh nice surround really great surround on that marauder he's got it oh he grabs the second one. Oh my god what a great defense by ryung to get that surround that was so awesome he should switch to zerg with surrounds like that man or Warcraft 3. I mean, either way, it's hard to stop unit pathing in Starcraft 2 because it's so fluid-like, but he says, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Does manage to trap those. Now, the thing that's kind of confusing to me is why, where was the third Marauder? I Oh, he was getting a, a factory and a starport again. So 
You know, Total Biscuit, I guess I haven't learned anything about this matchup because he's just going to do it once again. And I feel like he could have done a lot more damage having the, you know, continued Marauder support. But he decided to make this game a lot more interesting by mixing in some Widow Mines. Yeah, he's going to throw a mine in there, actually. And it depends. Where does he deploy? Is he actually going to go up the ramp with this thing and try and protect? I... Uh, ah, it deploys! He oh, he deployed! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Win oh, well, counter Widow Mine! Counter oh. Widow Mine splashes and kills the cloaked Widow Mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's actually doing the old switcheroo here with the units on there, the buildings on the high ground. Widow Mine production still continuing. I got to hand it to MMA. I mean, we saw him kind of fumble the uh, the early harass defense versus Crank, but now he's he's doing a very good job Psst, here. He's got a supply real. lead. He's lost MMA's less units playing. and uh, has managed to keep the same amount of workers, so not bad at all. We gotta watch out for that widow mine. Ah, uh, he's triggered it and it killed the marauder, and that's gonna be oh. one dead Hellion. The second one pretty damn badly damaged as well. Widow mine wars coming on between both of these guys right now, and the CC went up for Ryung much much quicker, so he's got a comfortable economic lead at the moment, and he's also moving his widow mine into the mineral line to defend. And these two widow mines also being deployed in a nasty little position. The CC is taking its time coming out here from. The one and the only heart, but now we've got Banshee coming in. Yeah, Ryang does have the uh, the Widow Mine in the Mineral Lines, so if the Banshee kind of messes this up, then it will get taken out, but you gotta remember that change doesn't attack cloak units. Now we do see, it uh, looks like there's trying to harass in the bottom right side, that didn't do anything. And the Banshee here needs to make sure he waits until that cloak is done before he gets too close to that Widow Mine, because it could be all over if he goes a little too close. Oh uh, no, no! Oh, <laughs> oh God, so painful. It really, really is. If it actually moved into the mineral line there, it wouldn't have killed the SCVs. That's the funny thing about TBT. That Winter Mine splashes 40 damage, not 45. It splash kills one shot all other workers other than SCVs. So that is something to bear in mind there. Yep, and uh, that was definitely worth it, though, getting that Widow Mine in position, although the Cloak Banshee could still be a threat here. There's the Cloak right there. Should go straight for the Command Center delay, and I think that's exactly what he's going to be doing here. The Widow Mine's going to try and get into position here. Now, I think if you scan, will it be able to clean it out? Either way, a Raven, believe... it don't matter. Yeah, yes, it Raven. does. If you spot that unit with detection, it will still take it out. So at this point, I mean, Hart is trying just to pull out all these crazy moves but uh, is just falling flat on his face and is also just on a full-out retreat right now. Uh, you, you, you don't mess around with the TBT master, man. Ryung is d a defensive player. Ryung has held pretty much everything in existence, and as a result, you just don't go in early against Ryung unless you have a really good plan. It appears that that will... Oh, whoops! Down goes the Raven, and that was, a, that was a, definitely a, a mistake. From, uh-oh, uh, ah, one fires off and hits it, oh, and the Banshee God. down as well. Yeah, that's, Ryung, unfortunately, making some slip-ups there against the Widowmine. He got into detection range, but then moved in just a little bit too close, and the Widowmine was triggered as a result, and more harassment comes in from Hart. He's able to do a little bit of damage, not a huge amount, but it's actually giving Hart the opportunity to catch up here in terms of his economy. Yeah, and uh, also that third command center for Ryung here. Delayed, uh, he man. Just yeah. now, yeah, just now put the SCB on there, not realizing it had been delayed so heavily. So, I mean, again, I, I feel like the Widow Mine is the one unit that you have to learn how to deal with it perfectly. Um, a misclick is going to cost you a Raven, a Banshee, all your SCVs or workers. So, definitely keep an eye out for that moving forward. Widow Mine's very effective throughout the entire duration of the game. Um, the Viking right here going to be able to hold this off. If he ventures too close to try and kill the Banshee, he himself will just fall victim to the widow mines as well so the raven right now is out to detect these widow mines but again we saw they can get one shot just yep. like everything else that they can if you're not careful with your raven then your raven goes pop so not exactly ideal there's the cloak for all of he's got no energy so that was really weird to actually go for that but never mind he's now pulling back and there's the scan to clean up the remaining widow mine is going to be able to do that with a tank the last one's going to try and get out of there and he might very well be able to widow mines surprisingly quick but the hellions should be able to clean that out and they very much do so things are actually looking really good for Hart right now because he did get a third command center down before his opponent and this containing harassment has been pretty good for him yeah it's it's been beautiful he also has the drilling claws on the way for those widow mines showing us that he wants to continue using that unit and remember i mean there aren't a lot of units like this in uh, wings of liberty maybe high templar storm but to a much less degree where if you make one mistake that unit will uh, get someone who's way behind and put it back into an equal game and that's actually what we saw so far where you know we we're talking about how well rung actually held on in the game 
But, uh, you know, the Widow Mines turned it right back around. So it does look like finally, for the first time this game, Ryung is going to be moving out on the map. He's uh, really had no map presence this whole time, but the Hellions seem to want to change that. That they do, and those Hellions are actually badly hurt. And that's Blue Flame versus No Blue Flame. And this is a classic phrase that I used about two years ago. You want to know what the best counter to Hellion is? Hellion. Or Hellions. Exactly. Hellion is the best counter to Hellion, especially with Blue Flame. That gives a great edge there. And, well, finally, this proxy nonsense will, of course, be cleaned up, but Hearts in a really good position. His army's not that big, admittedly, but it's getting rapidly larger, and he's getting into the position where he should be able to catch up. No siege as of yet here. In fact, he's not even researching it, come to think of it. No, there he is. Now, now he's researching it. Upgrades-wise, it's plus one armor and then plus one attack. Both of these guys going for drilling claws with the Widow Mines. Yeah, and the Banshee on the right side, actually in a beautiful position right there. The Vikings uh, a little bit distracted on that barracks there instead of being in a position to defend that, which uh, if that Banshee goes right now, it's just going to barely miss these mules as they are timing out right now. But the SCV is always a nice, supple little unit there to be able to kill it off with those Banshees. And, you know, honestly, TB, this could easily turn into quite an epic game. I mean, both players losing a lot of stuff here, but when all is said and done, it's only about 500 resources separating these two, and uh, they're already up to three, moving on to four bases. Nice exchange there. Gets the Viking for the cost of no Viking. There are some Widow Mines deployed, but this is a big army coming right here from Ryong. Ryong does not have Siege Tech as of yet, so he's just got to push forward with a mobile army. And there's a scan, and those Widow Mines not very effective at all this time around. Hellion's trying to move their way in. Blue Flame Hellion engages here as well, but Ryong does have more stuff than his opponent. And, oh, Siege just finished. That could actually be huge here. And Ryong pre-splitting his tanks to try and avoid most of the Siege Fire. If the, he can actually do this, he's Plays tanks so well, and he destroys that tank army. Yeah, now remember that Hart will be able to uh, set up those siege tanks in a defensive position to secure his main natural and potentially the third. He just dropped all his mules down there, so he's hoping the Hellions don't run directly to the third base. Looks like that might be exactly where they're headed, though. And oh no, the bad rally on the tank, so he's got to be careful. Should siege on the high ground, that indeed he does. But uh, right now, Ryung making all the right moves here, denying the third base, killing off that army, and now setting up a container. He's got to try and just bust right up this ramp. Usually not a good idea, but when you have this big of an advantage, might as well go for it. SCP's pulled off the line, and does Hart decide to go ahead and see Oh, man. Nope, oh, look the at the Widow Mines. Oh, the SCPs. Oh, they're obliterated by the Quick Borrow Widow Mines there. And 38 SCPs to 74, 42 workers killed. That was absolutely brutal, and Ryung actually still has those Wind Mines in the natural, and Ryung is on his way to a 4-0 sweep. It is looking that way. I mean, those Wind Mines are just going to be sniping these siege tanks as they spawn, which is, I mean, you really can't recover from something like that. He has a couple units in the center, but those Widow Mines, they are ready to go. Goodbye, siege tank number one, soon to be siege tank number two. There it goes. And uh, again, the Widow Mines, they get into your base. You, you have, you're forced to use a scan. And it's kind of tough to do that when, uh, you, you know, you're already so far behind in the resources. But uh, keep in mind, he does have the third base down at the bottom right, or bottom left, excuse me, but no rally point set means a lot of lazy workers. It does. It, it very much does. Heart making a little bit of a mistake there. Having not rallied means nobody is mining. Now he finally realizes what's going on. But Ryung is well ahead here. He's got the army supply. He certainly has the upgrades. He's got the positioning. He's currently sitting on four bases very comfortably. Going to be making that into an orbital as well. Not even bothering with a planetary. Indeed, why would you? And then he's going to move down a few more Widow Mines here. And this base is... Well, it could be a little bit risky. Can't move in there. There's tanks already deployed to make sure that doesn't happen yet. Oh, and the counter widow mine play here is able to cancel out a few for heart. And even then, I mean, he's crawling back into this game, but it is still pretty brutal. There's also this widow mine sitting in the mineral line here on the fourth base of heart. Now, I do want to say we have the Mobius reactor on the way for the ghost. That's telling me. That there's very well going to be some explosive nukes here for Ryung to try and close out this game. But, uh, you know, I know that Hart is way, way behind. But at the same time, anything can happen. And also, his upgrades are looking pretty good. He's at 2-1. He's got 3-2 on the way, which is way, way ahead of that of, uh, of Ryung. So That's... if he can get a favorable engagement, it will heavily, heavily favor him. That is very, very true. The question is, can he do it? More to the point, there's a lot of Widow Mines with Burrow ready in that force here for Ryung. There is a little bit of Banshee harass. This Banshee is a bit of a hero, man. He is on 12 kills, looking to be 13. And you know what? Can't shoot Heli. Well, yeah. 
You know what? Can't shoot this. Hellions. Hellions are absolutely useless here. So this Banshee is more than going to pay for itself. Takes out yet another mule. And Hart is crawling his way back into this game. And he's doing so in a fine style. Oh, man. And he looks for the deployment of the Winter Mines. And a ah, quick split goes in from the Vikings. And it still takes a lot of damage. But he split, though, so fast to avoid the splash. Yeah, he needed to right there. But, uh, you know, the, the supply advantage is going to quickly be closing here. Although the, uh, the resource advantage for Young is huge. And going to be planning down those Widow Mines. So he is going to be going up to five bases right now. And, you know, there's really never been a time where Young had enough units to actually end this. Yes, he no. tried to march up the ramp. He got taken out. And uh, I got to say that Hart's defensive play has been pretty top-notch. Although nukes are going to be quite, quite fun here. I, I can't imagine what else the cloaking would be for. Yeah, th there's no other reason to actually get the ghosts, I guess. And now a lot of Hellions are going to die here. And taking out a couple of tanks and not really deploying quick enough. A ton of Widow Mines get bored, but they get splashed. And most of those actually just hit one tank. That was not a good engagement there. And Ryong is actually losing his army here. And this upgrade advantage is about to kick in for Hart. He's 3-2 right now versus 2-1. Yeah, and that Siege Tank Splash is especially going to be playing a huge role here with that bonus upgrades. Although the Siege Tanks do manage to find a nice little sweet spot here to attempt to delay these command centers. Might be able to get one, but the reinforcements showing up just in time. This is what I'm saying about those Widow Mines. They can get anyone back in a game if you use them absolutely perfectly. As Hart now has even the scores actually ahead even uh, in, the, in the supply counts. He's at 67 workers, which considering how far behind he was before, that is a lot less right now. And uh, the Ghosts, I don't think are going to be able to really do that much. So maybe they're just there for uh, for being kind of sexy. But other than that, we don't see any nukes on the way just yet. And Hart finally going to be securing himself in the center. I have to wonder if EMP actually reveals them. Uh, that would be an interesting thing, I guess. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but I can't imagine why. It's weird. I, you'd think you'd build it for nukes, but he hasn't actually constructed any nukes yet. And now a large Viking force gives air superiority here to... Uh, to Complexity Heart, who does now have the lead and is now sieging up the fourth base, looking to get the Widow Mines in good position. He's able to do just that. And those barracks are going to go down, and suddenly I realize, oh god, I've just moved the scoreboard. Help, help. Don't worry, I made the same mistake myself. Right, at the I got same it. Time, I got this. It does look like the, uh, the siege tanks there are going to be able to prevent the flank attack of those Hellions. And uh, really, the Hellions are there just to try and get on top of the tanks to do splash damage themselves. We haven't seen anyone try and utilize the, uh, the Hellbat there. I think that for this entire tournament, but right now we do see Ryung in the center of the map, but at the same time, what looks like a good position is actually really bad, because he's going to be losing this, uh, I guess, fifth base over here on the right side. Oh, and he was ready for the lift up as well with the Vikings that just absolutely murder that command center, and Ryung is kind of on the ropes now. I mean, he's, he's certainly not lost yet, but Hart's in such a great position. Ryung is now mining from his fifth over to the left there so that's something that's going to keep him in the game certainly but these engagements so far have actually been going in favor of heart the question is can he turn it into anything you know he's sitting around with a lot of winter mines but he's actually you know not able to make any really decisive plays against the army of his opponent even though he's done really well against that fourth base yeah, and I mean, right now he is sitting at uh, 191 supply. The siege tanks right there, barely out of range of those widow mines, and uh, that could be disastrous for him if he marches those over. But it does look like Ryung right now not going to be doing that as what? a lot of ghosts are on the field look and at no what, nuke. Have you seen what Ryung's building? He's building five Thors at once. Oh my god, Thor is indeed here, and you gotta remember that Thors now are very, very good versus air units, so something like Vikings, you don't even have to use the splash damage anymore. But here comes a big, big attack right now by Hardy. He is gonna try and march in here. Can he make it work? Uh-oh. Did you just get a game freeze? Because I did. I, oh, oh, my computer is freaking out. I got a black screen. Oh dear, that, that was uh, unfortunate timing. Well, looks like we're going to be, we might be dropping Husky here. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to have to wait for him to time out, needless to say. So we may lose Husky, but it's okay. We, I, I can finish out the game and Husky can kind of provide flavor. In fact, his entire computer may have crashed by the looks of it. We, we have lost the call. At least the, the stream is still up. So we, we will do the best that we can. Just let the guys know. It's okay, guys. We will finish this game out. We have lost the Husky. Hopefully, we'll get him back. Hopefully, that won't happen during the FFA because we need him. 
Maxim requires his representation. Husky has now left the game, and here we go, folks. It's getting messy on both sides. Honestly, Thor has arrived and is smashing its way through this army. I mean, these upgrades are so ridiculous here for Hart, and that was a really solid engagement for him. These Vikings are going to be taking a lot of fire from the ground as well and are most likely not going to be living. In the meantime, all sorts of nonsense going on. These ghosts are moving into harassment range and are starting to try and pick off workers on all sides of the map. There's one here. There's one over there. It's going to die to tanks, of course. But Ryong is trying to fight back as best he can. The addition of this ridiculous count of Thors might very well give him what he needs to do that. And we'll see if that is enough for him to actually remain in this game. Because Hart is looking really strong. But he did lose a lot there, gotta say. And the addition of these Thors is a, a big, big punch. We're looking at potentially, oh wow, six Thors on the field for him. And that should be coming in the direction of Hart any, any moment now. It's going to be 3-3 three, three tanks versus a lot of Thors there. 3-2 right now. Not working on the remaining armor upgrade, which could certainly be very useful. Hasn't got that at the moment. Widow Mines Trigger taking down a couple of Vikings here up to the fourth base of Ryung. And is it... It's not really too big a deal. Losing a couple of Vikings isn't actually a problem for him at all right now. There's the board. Wintermines going down. The quick scan. But a couple go into that line of Hellions. So what a great siege position here. Oh, but the Wintermines are right below it. Oh, what a sick move by Ryung. He smashes the tank line with a Widowmine flank before his opponent is able to do anything. And that was incredibly good. Wow. So, so good there by Ryung to be able to move around the back there and snipe them off. Seven Hellions coming on the field right here for Ryung now. A lot of Widowmines coming for Hart, and that may slow the advance of Ryung here, but you gotta say, Widowmines don't really kill Thors all that quickly. In fact, Thors are great Widowmine spongers as long as they don't take too many shots. I believe they can take... I think they can t take at least two, maybe even three direct hits, so... Let's bear that in mind. They're pretty damn good at what they do. In fact, yes, I'm sure they can. Because I think it's 100 and... Is it 130? No, actually, it's 160. So they can take two direct hits and a hell of a lot of splash. Speaking of a hell of a lot of splash, uh, Hellion coming down to uh, this base over here. Just trying to do as much damage as possible. Five more tanks coming on the field for Hart. And Ryong going right in. There's no defense to deal with. There's no Widow Mines at all. And the entire mineral line goes toasty toasty. And Ryong coming back in this quite nicely. A landed Viking and a Widow Mine, however, wipes out the mineral line for Ryong as well. And this is just an absolute slobber knocker from both of these guys. Currently, however, Ryong has the higher work account, is able to sit pretty secure on five bases. And Hart, on the other hand, moving forward with a pretty substantial army. And it's about neck and neck in terms of army count here. This 3 3 upgrade advantage is giving something of an edge to Hart, but the upgrade advantage doesn't make a lot of difference when Widow Mines are in play. Just bear that one in mind. Who's going to deploy where? Widow Mines going down already, and most of them detonate, actually killing themselves in the splash there, and deliberately putting the Hellions up front to be sponges for that. The Thor's now moving forward, and they easily wipe out this tank line. And that gives an edge, just a small one, you would think, to Complexity Heart, since he does have a slightly larger army than his opponent at the moment. And this base is going down. No real question about that. There's the deployment. The workers are about to get absolutely brutalized. Ryung is being pushed back once again. His force is now moving forward, trying to keep an eye out for Widow Mines. There are quite a lot on the map for both sides, 15 and 12. And that is the fifth base of Ryung absolutely trashed here by Complexity Heart. The fourth base is looking pretty good, and there are no Widow Mines in the back, although he could easily do that, actually. That's something that Hart could very much consider as an option here. Right now, a bit of a dodgy engagement coming in, and he wants to try and be careful to get away from that. Actually, he's deploying mules to trap the tanks. What a little move that is, and it's uh, actually a complete waste of minerals, but it was neat. Nonetheless, it was kind of neat. And he does take out one tank as a direct result of that trap. Currently still neck and neck for both sides. Sitting on big banks and a couple of Widow Mines do take some damage as they go through. Ryung with a nice little placement. Didn't go down for the most part though. Widow Mines are, as you might imagine, not as tough as you might think. This base is clearly going to die here and... Oh man, they found it. That's it. It looks like they've surrounded the Widow Mines and he hasn't taken that much damage. Surprisingly, he if he scans again, he can kill the remaining Widow Mines. It's currently 64 workers killed by Ryung, 37 here for Hart. But these Widow Mines are about to go off again and he's clearly going to lo lose a lot of workers here as these detonate. 
Or maybe he isn't, actually. He lost very few workers, as it turns out. They were not well deployed at all. The big army from Hart moving forward, and he's deploying his own mules to trap the forces, and that was way more effective. Boring the Widow Mines in the center. They're about to go off, and Hart is looking to take this, and he crushes the army completely. Hart refusing to allow Ryung to go through this tournament with a clean sweep. He's played a mighty piece of TBT right here, and we're going to see a battle cruiser transition from Ryung, assuming he actually gets the chance to do do it. I have to wonder if he's going to live long enough. Right now, Ryung is down to 136 supply. His army supply is not looking good at all. Whereas, on the other hand, we've got all these tanks that are being taken down by a single battle cruiser. Oh, there's the second one coming out. Two battle cruisers at a time here. Going to have to see a lot more Vikings coming out from Hart in order to actually deal with this. Big army now moving over in this direction. Battle cruisers have been deployed. Battle cruisers do not care for your widow mines. They can take quite a few hits, but still three would be enough. He micros it out of the way, but it's not enough. He takes two direct hits and down goes the battle cruiser to those widow mines. Really nicely traded. This CC is going to go down, no question about that. Three BCs now on the field here. And we're also looking for plus three armor, which will work there. Doesn't have the plus ship weapons. Huge engagement coming around that clearly goes in Hart's favor right now. And things are looking worse and worse. GG and Ryung finally bleeds in this matchup. Hart takes the win on Ohana. What a great example of TBT from both these guys and some awesome play across the board. Hart takes it. And now we know, folks, now we know what the final rankings are. For joint first place that will be going forward to the grand finals, we have Axiom Ryung and Axiom Crank. Both sitting in a joint second. It is Complexity Heart and Acer MMA. And last, and in this case, every means least, who will be doing the dishwashing, it is Axiom Mia, 0-4, in this tournament. Oh man. Insanity. Absolute insanity. We're gonna bring Husky back into the call. Hopefully. Hey, hey. Oh man. Sorry you had to miss that one. Hart pulls out a phenomenal win against Ryung there. Oh wow, yeah. I, uh, I I didn't realize I accidentally left the house heat on for the entire time we've been casting, and it's like 90 degrees in my room, so that very well may have contributed to... They uh, overheated the computer? Yeah. Yeah, I, and I, it was totally my fault, because like, yeah, I didn't realize during that game I was sweating like balls, man. It was <laughs> so hot in here, so my poor, poor computer.